it's me. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Let the wicked abandon their ways. Let them turn to the Lord for mercy. All who, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive bread and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Gracious God. Throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Joy. 
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the ninth chapter. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, and now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Children, you may come forward tonight. Thank you. 
for us tonight a first aid kit. Very handy to have if anybody ever gets hurt to have around. What do you think? When might you need this? A big gauze or a big band aid? Yeah, Catherine? When might that be helpful? <laughs> yeah, gauzes can be used if your skin's really sensitive and you need to put that over to protect it. That is an, a very helpful thing to use for gauze. Yes. What about when might you use just a normal band? Sure, when you got a scratch, yep, that comes in really handy. And it's helpful to like put like cream on it that can clean it, right? When might you need an ice pack? Sure, if you bumped your knee or something else and it's not bleeding, but it just hurts or it's sore, the ice can help feel it, make it feel better. That's right. There are lots of helpful things in a first aid kit for when our bodies get hurt. Um, what, what do we do when our hearts are hurting or when our minds are hurting? God has given you special people in your life, like your, your family, um, to help you and to take care of you. And God can work through them. And we come to church so that we can hear God's word in the Bible. Uh, that, to, that we, tonight we hear the story, once again, of a man who was born blind and Jesus healed his eyes so that he could see for the first time ever. Which shows that God has power to heal, to bring healing. And God wants to heal us when we're sick and works through doctors and nurses um, and our families to heal us. And it all, that story also shows us that when our hearts are hurting or when our minds are hurting, like when we're feeling scared or really worried or really sad, that God can heal us too and that we pray to God to help us do that. Tonight, in a little while, you can have the choice, uh, if you would like, to go to one of the stations up here in the front or in the back where uh, somebody can pray for you, uh, for your healing, so that in your, and in your body, in your, in your mind, and in your heart, like in your feelings, that you can be happy because God wishes that for you. Let's pray now. Dear God, thank you for caring about every part of us. Whenever we are hurting or sick or scared, make us well. Amen. Amen. All right, you can go back to sit with your families or where you were sitting before. The man born blind was hurting in every possible way that a person can hurt. And Jesus met him and took care of him and healed him in every way. This gospel shows us that God cares about our whole selves, body, mind, spirit, relationships, faith, that God has power to bring healing and that God desires to bring us healing. At the beginning of the gospel, the disciples ask about, the, about uh, the man born blind. Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In the ancient world, like many people today, there was an assumption that if someone was sick, if someone was ill, if someone was suffering, that God had specifically given them that illness as a punishment. That was a concept. That's how they thought uh, about God, specifically doling out suffering. And Jesus corrects that to say that is not an accurate understanding of how God works. And that we would be wise to be cautious and careful to ever say that God has specifically caused anyone's illness or suffering or to think that for ourselves. Because Jesus turns that around. He says, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. And this too... Uh, be careful that, you, that we don't make the conclusion that he was born specifically blind for God's glory, but that in the midst of that, 
God used it for glory, to care for the man and to bring about faith for the man and for all who would hear this story throughout the centuries. That God's works, that God's power would be revealed through Jesus Christ. So the first way that Jesus brings healing is to heal both the man who was born blind and the disciples and all who are willing to listen our understanding of who God is and where God is in the midst of suffering. That God is not doling out suffering as punishment for sin, but instead at work in the midst of sin, in the midst of pain and suffering to bring healing. Obviously the man was suffering in body as he was born blind. And of course, Jesus heals him and shows that God has power over illness. God has power over all things and brought him relief. When the, his neighbors ask him, uh, was this not the man who used to sit and beg? And he says, I am the man. The man born blind echoes Jesus' I am statements as he says throughout the whole Gospel of John. He says that he is, unlike Peter who will deny his discipleship three times and say that he is not the man who knows Jesus, the man born blind says, I am the man. And so, in that, in healing his body, Jesus also heals the man's identity. That before, he was someone who had nothing to offer the world. A burden to his parents, uh, an eyesore to his neighbors, an object of ridicule to the Pharisees. And yet now, he becomes the man, I am he, the one who testifies to Jesus' power. That he is now a missionary, an apostle, someone sent to tell about God's power. And so in healing his body, Jesus also heals the man's understanding of himself, his self-concept, his, and his sense of purpose. Jesus heals uh, and tends to the man's relationship. You can tell by how the Pharisees treat this man and by how his own parents abandon him and turn him over to the authorities, essentially, because they are afraid that they will be thrown out of the synagogue, that he has no support, not from the religious leaders, not from his neighbors, and not even from his family. The man is entirely alone. And Jesus, when he hears that he has been cast out, in, out of the synagogue, so has lost his congregation, Jesus goes to be with him. He abides with the man and stays with him. And so Jesus brings healing to the man's uh, loneliness, to his sense of isolation, to the fact that his relationships are hurting. And he says to him, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man answers, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus says, I am he. So that, and then he says, Lord, I believe. And in that, in healing the man physically, in going to be with him once he was cast out, and in revealing his identity as Almighty God, the Son of Man, Jesus also heals uh, the man's spirit, heals his faith, and gives him faith that he might believe in Jesus Christ, who is Lord. And so the, God, Jesus tends to every aspect of the man born blind, his body, his mind, his spirit, his sense of relationships, his purpose, his identity, and his faith. This shows not only that God has power to bring healing in every aspect of our lives, but that God desires to bring healing and wholeness in every aspect of our lives. God cares for our whole selves. And God's healing is for all of us. We gather around the word this evening and every Sunday so that we, like the man born blind, might receive Jesus' power of healing in body, mind, spirit, relationship, purpose, identity, and faith, so that we may know Jesus, and like the man born blind, say for ourselves, Lord, I believe.
many as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing. With prayer, the laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we are now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. If you would like to receive prayer and oil for anointing this evening, you may do so at one of three stations. Uh, up here in the front, uh, on your right, uh, here on the left, and then at the back. Um, given our, the amount of people at present here, if you are able physically, um, for those of you who are sitting on this side, you can come forward here to this station at the rail. You can stand or kneel. Um, and for those of you who are in the front here, you can come to this station. And for those of you who are seated on this side in the rear of the sanctuary, you can go to the station at the baptismal font. If you are worshiping from home tonight, then uh, you may use this time for prayer and reflection, uh, and God's peace be with you and bring you healing as well. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God.
You may kneel as you are able. Let us pray. Living God, through the laying on of hands and anointing, grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense and help you to know the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you are worthy to be held in reverence by all the mortal race. We give you thanks for the innumerable blessings which, despite our unworthiness, you have showered upon us. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you especially that you have preserved for us in their purity your saving word and the sacred ordinance of your house. Grant and pre preserve to your church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach your word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and firmly to believe your word of truth. Lord, in your mercy. Protect and defend your people in time of tribulation and danger, that we, in communion with your church and in unity with all Christian people, may fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the fullness of salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Upon all the nations of the earth bestow your grace. Especially we ask you to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause your glory to dwell among us, and let mercy and truth, justice and peace everywhere prevail. We commend to your care all our schools, that virtue and useful knowledge may be nurtured, nourished, and the wholesome fruits of life may abound. Lord, in your mercy. In your mercy, defend us all from calamities, by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper all who labor and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Show yourself to be the helper of the sick and needy, the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Lord, in your mercy. Accept, we pray, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers as our offering of praise. Lord, in your mercy. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us to prepare for the world to come, doing the work which you have given us to do while it is day, before that night comes when no one can work, and when our last hour shall come. Support us by your power and receive us into your everlasting kingdom, where, with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, God, forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, You may stand as you are able. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.